Okay, folks, today's lesson is the 2009 English test. Okay. So, as a reading and for booklet, no place by home. Okay, enter your details here for school. You can cross off school right to this date. Okay, are we ready to start, folks? Let's turn over. me writing off the board and I'm not on the video please let me know. Section today we're going to be using the visualizer to display the work. I'm going to be sitting here. That's the visualizer going through the work on the on this my paper here and you'll see it on the, on the board. Okay. You can choose the best word. These questions are about the dear Norman letters pages four to nine. So everybody this is our booklet or place like home. Okay, so this is the, the reading booklet that you should have. Okay, so everybody can turn to the dear Norman question about the normal letters. Okay. Choose the best word or group of words to fit the passage and put a ring around your choice. Okay. On something on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday morning, Norman left home. He went to live in a house. Okay now. Okay, let's have Zora. Zora uh, which page are you on with page number? Page number page number four. Okay, page number four, the evidence for the day that he left home is? It came as quite a surprise when you left with all your possessions this morning. This and morning, it, yeah? It left on Monday at the time. Okay, so in the letter on page number four, Norman mentioned that he left this he, he left this morning. That's his dad talking him. And the morning is? Monday. That's the day, Monday. So that's going to be the information on page number four. So we're going to select Monday. <coughs> okay, next. Next, it says there, uh, Norman left home. The reading book looks open. Okay. Okay, he went to live. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, folks, you need to be on time. We just had a late struggle to come in 20, nearly 20 minutes late. Disrupts the lesson. I will deal with those students uh, after the end of the lesson. Okay, Norman left home. He went to live in a tree house in the local park, his front garden, his back garden with the school playground. Okay, smile. Where, did he, where was it, the tree house? No, you know, it's that it was because we have going to live in the tree house in the back garden. Okay, lovely. So, are you talking about the letter from Dad? So on page number four, the first letter, Dear Norman, okay, love dad, he says there, yeah, we know it's because you have gone to live in your tree house in the back garden. So from the first letter, we can tell where he actually is. The letter there, dad writes him. So that's page number four, okay. So he's actually gone to stay in the back garden. Okay. Now, he had left home because, why did he leave home? Because Beth had moved into his room that I had mentioned. His parents had sent him away. His parents were knowing him, but he had been expelled from the school. Okay, now. Okay, everybody have a look at your text. 
I'll give you the text on pages four and five. The clue is Okay, whose letter can we find the clue to why he left home? Okay, let's have uh, Idris. His mom's letter. Okay, in his mom's letter. Okay, in his mom's letter, what does she say? In the which paragraph? In the first. First paragraph. There you go, yes, there you are. You are very, you are very sweet to take the time to write. Thank you for explaining our mistakes. So who is it blaming for the reason why he's leaving? His parents. So he goes, thank you for explaining our mistakes. So this part here indicates to us what's happened. Give me one moment, I've got a bit of extra light coming in. I've got to cover this back window. Like that answer, please. Sorry about all this. Okay, so number three. So you know that his, his parents were annoying him. Okay, question number four. Okay, over the next few days, he received letters from people that he knew, starting with letters from who? Who the first letters that he got? Letters from. Page number four and five, all letters his family. from his family. Because the letters are addressed, love dad, and we have mom. And one was from his sister, Beth. Okay? So originally they were from his family. A letter came from his best, from his friend Alfred, <laughs> asking him for his... What was his friend Alfred asking for? And his friend Alfred writes a letter on which page, by the way, which page have you put? You know, page 7, well done Zora. So, page 7. Okay, page number 7. So, what's this about you living in your tree house? Okay, what is he asking for? SSPS, can I have your bike? Can I have your bike? Okay, so his friend He's asking for his bicycle. He even got a letter from the local newspaper telling him that. What did the local newspaper tell him? So if you look back at the booklet, everybody should be flicking through the booklet. And the local newspaper is on page... Uh, eight. On page eight, the Parkville Gazette. This letter here, this one here, local newspaper. Now, okay, let's give everybody else a chance to work out some of the answers. Okay, right, Khadija, do you know what what was the newspaper telling him? Uh, he has no he has won uh, he has won a competition. Okay, he had won a competition? Are we happy with that? He had won a competition. What competition had he won? Um, writing an article and he wrote it on peace now. Okay, lovely. He had wrote an article and it was on the article on peace begins in your own back garden. That's all they got from Ward for Lovely. Altogether, he stayed in, the, in his tree house for, you have a whole day, about three days, 
over a week for the summer holidays. I need evidence from the text. And if you look at the text, now, in the beginning, everything starts on what day? Monday. Everything starts on a Monday. And if you go to the end of the text, it's Thursday. Thursday. It's Thursday. If you look at the text here, Dear Norman, uh, on page number 9, that's from his mother. Mother's writing to him back on a Thursday. It says thank you for your letter. I understand your feelings. It'll be okay just to move back into the house. Don't forget to wipe your feet. That's lovely. It was about three days. It's about three days. Okay, have you all circled the correct ones? Right, let's move forward. I hope this picture's coming okay out on the YouTube, uh, on, onto the recorded video. We actually, today we're using the visualizer. Okay. Right, here are some of the people who wrote to Norman. Use these names to answer the questions on this page. Who wrote to Norman using the most formal style of writing? Right. First of all, what does the word formal mean, Idris? Like you're not gonna say as uh, chatty. That's correct. So more, more what style then? So, so somebody is not chatty. We are talking about it is gonna be very it's like somebody writing official letter to you, official, yeah. Informals, like for example, me talking to you, right? A letter. How you doing, Idris? Is he okay when you're coming around? And now it's kind of like chatty type of style of writing. So informal is more like an official type of writing. So, if you look through the text, no place like home, I want you to tell me which one of the texts, starting from page 4 onwards, is uh, written by more formal. Okay. Which person? Has anybody found it? Okay. Umber, go on then. Mrs. Bouquet. Mrs. Bouquet, right. Thank you. And where's the evidence for that? That's going to be on page. Page five. On page five, Mrs. Bouquet, or Bouquet, whatever you want to pronounce her, she writes an official letter to him from the school with the school header on it, stamp with the school uh, address, and dear normal, I understand. She's writing an official letter, date, paragraphs, everything set out officially as you expect. So, Ms. okay. Who wrote to Norman using the most? So, this one here, I was writing here. Okay. We happy with that? We leave this one. You are right in here. Who admired Norman most for what he had done? Alfred. Okay. Zara says it was Alfred. Let's look back to the text. Alright. If you look at the text on page number seven. Hey Norm, what's this about? Talk about stop prestige, this thing. You can stay there. This is so cool. I wish I had thought of it. Alfred. So who admired Norman for what he had done and the answer is going to be? So Alfred is really kind of the same. Well done. Excellent job. Okay. So what can we write down for a phrase that shows that he really thought it was good? Can you write that, can you write that phrase down? This is so cool. Yeah. I wish yeah. I had thought of it. Okay. So any of those two will do. So I will just write down here. So this is so cool and Alfred. Okay, and the evidence for that is in the text. Okay. And he says, This is so cool, I wish I thought of it. That's another possible answer. And that's from Alfred. And that's on page seven. Right, next question, question number 10. Whose letter do you think was most likely to annoy Norman? So we're looking for the letter that's going to get on his nerves. Okay, so we're looking through the booklet. They start off nice and straightforward on pages 4 and 5. <coughs> and then... Okay, Khadija, which one do you think it is? Uh, his sister. His sister, right. Yeah. What page are you looking at? Um, page... Uh, 5. Page 5. What did she say on page 5? Do you know, my mum and dad said, I can have your room, 
Okay, good. So, whose letter do you think was most likely to annoy Norman? That's just one of the letters that could annoy Norman. What other possibilities could we have in terms of annoying Norman? That's one. Okay, there's, there's two other people's letters that we could use. One was mom's. Now, what does dad say on page seven? Oh, he does the calculations and all the things yeah. in his pocket. There. So, he's what missing. is his dad doing? His dad being sarcastic. Oh, look how much money we're saving. Basically, you're doing us a favor. Or, oh, it's like a way of like a, trying to encourage him to come back down. So, his dad said, Look, you're losing all this pocket money. Yeah, you've got it. You're going to keep it. Yeah, that's another one. What else is it? And if you go to the, in the beginning, did your mother say something about taking the TV up under the thingy? Yeah, he said that, uh, how did you manage to get that big TV set up there? Is there a TV set up there? No. Basically, he's left all the TV back in the house. So the three possible answers for this one here, you could say his mother annoyed him, yeah, because she was saying about, uh, how did you manage to, I can see that you easily got the TV up there. How did you manage to get that big TV set up there? It certainly was clever. So she's been sarcastic, meaning that you've gone to the tree house but you left your favourite TV behind. You haven't had that with you. Father's been sarcastic saying, you know, oh, well done, uh, you're going to save us lots of pocket money, you're missing on pocket money. And then sister's saying, oh, I'm taking over your, right. I'm out of your room. Okay, so any of those three will do. We're going to, for the moment, we're going to write down Beth. We're going to write down one of the answers. We're going to stick with Beth, his sister. And we're going to say the reason is, what is she doing? What do, what do sisters and brothers do to each other? Annoying. And know each other. She's teasing him. She's teasing him, saying, I won't take your room. And she's saying, ha ha. She's laughing in this one. So. So Beth is teasing her brother yeah by saying that she's gonna she's gonna what she's saying that dad wants to have a room so she's been given a room not that she's taking it over she's been given a room the moment I said I can have your room that she is going to have his room. And then she finishes off by laughing at them. She finishes off her note. By laughing. Say laughing at him or scoffing at him. And the quotation for that is going to be what did she say? Okay, we're happy with that. So we could have chose for this one here. Could it be Beth? That's the reason. Could it be the mother taking, uh, you know, teasing him by saying, "Oh, you took tea up there, haha." <laughs> yeah. Or the father saying, "How much money they're saving?" Okay, let's turn over. So we're now on page number six on our answer booklet, and this is question number eleven. What do you think Norman wrote in reply to Alfred's letter on page seven? Now, in order to do this this part, this task, any justice. You have to become Norman. You have to become. Uh, you have to become that boy who's in the treehouse. You have to think about what, how he's feeling, and the comments that his friend made to him, and what do kids like doing? First of all, do kids like brushing their teeth? No. Do they like being told what to eat, what they can eat? No. So all the comments that were made in there, then the kind of thing that he's putting here, yeah, I would love to do that. So if you look back at the original text, because does this mean you can eat whatever you want? Well, that part's a bit difficult when you're living in the treehouse and all the food in the house. 
Stop washing. Well, there's no, no opportunity for you to wash anything. Stop brushing your teeth. What happens if you stop brushing your teeth? They're going to fall out. Are you going to wear some clothes every day for a year? You're going to stink. So just think you could spend the whole night with your Game Boy. What do you need to play a Game Boy? You need electricity. There's no electricity up in the, uh, the thingy. You can stay on strike for a month. This is so cool. So, what's some possible idea we could have for Alfred's uh, return letter? What kind of stuff could he be saying? How would he respond to his friend? What would be? He could either say like, you know, admit how miserable it is, or he could try big it up, say yeah, it's fantastic, and yeah, I'm really enjoying it and stuff. Yeah. So we've got two possibilities. So Idris, give me a possible uh, a response then. Maybe that like his but his buddy, because his mom and dad don't have to like tell him what to do. Yeah, that's right. So yes, he can eat what he wants. He can he can wear the clothes for a year if he wants to. And he doesn't have to brush his teeth. So he can actually he can agree with everything he says in the letter. Yes? But yes, it's fantastic. Okay, so should we say should we give a a positive? A positive reply. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So let's go for a positive reply. So how is he gonna say what's he gonna how's he gonna start his letter? Yeah. He's writing his letter to like a note to his friends, it won't be dear. Hey. Yeah. It'll be hi for hey yo. So he's writing back to you. Okay, remember this is just a note. Okay, so he's not writing in, in, he's not writing formal, it's informal. So hi Alfred. So what's he gonna say? So his friend thing is really cool. So yeah, it is very cool living up here. He doesn't like his mom or dad telling him what to eat, what to do. Now, is it going to be warm or cold up there? Cold. Cold. So, you can say, and who is he there with? Nobody who is there with him, just himself, isn't it? So happens after a while when he's there by himself, all alone. It's a bit lonely, isn't it? Okay. You can say, first of all, I'm having a fantastic time. It's a bit chilly at night. I can eat when I like. So he really meant some of the points mentioned to uh, to him by his friend about eating when you like, sleeping when you like. I can eat when I like. Even I like. Okay. okay. I don't need to brush my teeth. <laughs> Kids love not brushing their teeth. Okay, just put a bit of emphasis. I don't need to ever brush my teeth. He was, his friend was talking about wearing the same clothes for for, for one whole year, yeah? So he asked if he could have the bicycle, he could say no chance. Yeah, well, also, yeah, his friend asked him for a bike. What's he going to say about him? No. no get, go and get your own. Okay. So how would he say to him, how would he word it? Would he say to him, get lost or sorry, or what would he say? Sorry, you can't have my bike, it's mine. Get it on. He's already got one. Tomorrow we'll have one. So 
sorry. Okay. Okay, but you can't have my. What's he gonna say then? Okay. So he's writing to Alfred. So he's right. So he's like, puts his little no more than it. So that's just one possible version of what you could do. Okay. Next question number twelve. Bet's letters show a change. Bet's letters show a change in an attitude normal. Find a copy of word or phrase from both of Bet's letters that best show her change in attitude. First letter, second letter. So in the first letter, okay, Ismail, what kind of, what is she saying? Teasing. She's teasing him in the first letter by saying, Mom and Dad say I can have your room. Number one, that's a tease, isn't it? She's teasing him. That's in the first letter. So mom and dad say I can I can have your room could be for the first part and in the second part yeah, yeah, she said I miss you and oh. come back to your other house but you are so boring. It's so boring. You have the room back, you have to So in the first room. part she is saying to her brother, she says, Oh I can have your room, haha. And what page are you looking on Dara? Nine. Okay, page number nine. So this all the words do from the booklet, we need to find the answer in the booklet. Her sister says to what? She's saying now, I don't think you it's boring. Okay? She says I'm the key word that she uses here is I miss you. So first of all she's taking she's making uh, taking the Mickey out of him and then she says I miss you. So let's put those answers down. So the first part we're gonna write down. So this is the taunt. So she's taunting him. I can have your room. That's one idea. What's the, what's the second thing you write here? <laughs> That's the second possible answer for this one. Any of those will be correct. From the second letter, what does she say? I miss you. So the main thing that we can write down here is the, the I miss you <coughs> is one. What else could we have? Um, it's boring. It's boring. Has another answer. I don't think you should be on strike anymore. Okay. I don't think. You should be on strike anymore, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So that's just three of them. And also at the end of the letter, what did she say at the end of the letter? Your sincerely, your sister. So now she's actually talking to him in a nice way. Yeah. So that's three, four possible answers that we could use for as clues. So shall she change the attitude? Okay, are we finding the answers you two? Yeah. Okay. Well, it looks a bit sleepy to me. Okay, question B. Why do you think her attitude towards normal change? Well, the attitude changed actually, it's actually in the letter itself. So what did she say? Is it, she, what did she do? She actually, she's missing him. She don't think she's striking anymore. And she's bored. She's missing her brother, she's bored. So why do you think her attitude towards normal change? In the beginning, so, so initially it was what? It was fun taking over his room. Taking over Norman's room. Initially it was fun taking over Norman's room. Okay. So after a while. Okay, Beth. 
started to get, what did everybody get after a while? Started to get bored. So she got bored and began missing. <coughs> Her brother. Okay, have a look at that folks. Folks, are we ready for the next question? Okay, so remember there's not just one particular answer, we can have quite a few answers, possible answers. So in his second letter, page seven, Norman's father showed Norman how much money he was missing out on. Let's quickly go to that part of the text. So we're on page seven. So we're talking about page seven. Okay, thank you for your letter explaining why you do not want any pocket money this week. Ten years, fifty-two weeks. The father's worked out ten years of the pocket money. He's not gone up there for two or three days. Okay. So he's done a calculation. Okay. And worked out one thousand and forty pound. What was the purpose of that? Why did he do that? Okay, now he's made two pounds a week. Norman is not even due two pounds in that couple of days. He turned two pounds into how much? Yeah, yeah. Into That's one thousand and forty pounds. Boy, why working out for ten years? Would well, have been up there for two days. Okay. Why was he talking about pocket money? Pocket money is a language that everybody understands. Kids like money, actually everybody likes money, wrong. Not just, but kids like money a lot. They like buying things with their sweets and magazines and books and stuff and things. Okay, so why did he, why did he do that? So his father wanted to, to try to, it's like a, like a, encourage him to come back into the house. Okay, so his father wanted to remind him, you're going to be missing out all this money. Ten years of the money in two days, but he's just trying to exaggerate it. Look, you can miss it on pocket money if you stay in the house. If you stay in the tree house, you won't get it. So, why did he do that? So, number 13, let's quickly get this one down. So, He wanted to encourage Norman to come back into the house, to come back to the house. House by reminding him about how much money he'd be missing. Yeah? Reminding him that He would miss out on his pocket money. Okay, <coughs> right. 
Lizzie, why are you writing in red pen? Pencil, please. It's pencil on the tray. Okay. All right. Question number 14. How do you know that Norman actually answered the letters that he received? Now, that, this number 14, we have to imply from the text. It's not actually... It's not actually in the text, it's something that shows us that it's in the text. Look at the text. Okay, right. Let's have Rukhaya, have you found the part of the text that indicates to us? Khadija, have you found it? Okay. Right. We've got the same hands coming up in the class. Have you found, you're reading the, rereading the question, you need to be finding the answers in the text. You, your purpose of the being is not to here to receive and copy down answers. It's to do the work as well. Okay, everybody else is looking to the text and you guys have, uh, haven't even got to the text yet? Okay, let's give, uh, let's le listen to what Hafsa has to say. So Hafsa, how do you know the normal actually answers the letters he received? What indication and what part of the text are you looking at? What page are you on? Um, page 7. Page 7, okay, go on. Um, it says thank you for your letter. Okay, right. On page number seven, who's writing the letter? His dad. So Norman's dad says, thank you for your letter explaining. So we know from Norman's dad's letter that he's writing letters to him. So from that we can imply. Okay. So how do we know that Norman actually answered the letters he received? Okay. So we know that. Norman's dad okay says his letter okay Thank you for your letter. Okay, so Norman's dad says in his letter, thank you for your letter. Okay, so he's basically quoting you back to his son that uh, I've received your letter. And that's what you said in your letter. Okay, that's enough. One answer. Next, question number 14b. Why do we not need to see any of Norman's replies to the letters that he received? Now, why don't we need to see Norman's letters? Because no, what Norman said, where do they end up? Back in the letters written back to him. Yeah. So everybody's writing to Norman, they actually reply to an important part of his letter. So for example here, yeah, thank you for your letter explaining why you do not want any pocket money this week. So that's a, one of Norman's points. Okay, if you move forward into the next two pages, okay. Thank you for your letter. I understand your feelings. It will, it will be okay to move back to the house. So he's talking about moving back into the house. 
You can tell from the letters what he's talking about. So, 14b. So we... So we we can tell what Norman is saying. By looking at the what is it called? By looking at the subject of the letters written back to him. By looking at the so is a key subject or key topic of the letters written to Norman. Okay, I'm going to go with one mark. Okay. So, what does his, his father say? His father says in his letter, explain why you do not want any pocket money. Yeah? That's an example. So we can tell from what they're writing back to him that he's actually what, what the main content of his, of his letters are. What was the topic? What was the key thing? Okay, let's move on. Okay. Question number 15. The idea of a child living in a tree is quite humorous. Explain what else is funny about Norman's situation. If you can find anything funny about his situation. What was funny about his situation? Okay. What is he trying to do? There's lots and lots of points that you can... Okay. Alright. What is humorous? Go on. Okay, his friends want his bicycle. Yeah, he's got a tree as his friends are interested in what he's got. They want to get, grab all of his stuff. So his friend wants his bicycle. What else? What does, it, what does it, he think he could do? What does the normal thing he can achieve? He thinks he can leave his family and go and live on his? Oh, so as a child, it was so funny about it. He thinks they're annoying him. Where is he living? Yes. Who's annoying him? Yeah, his parents. And where is he living? In a tree house in his parents' back garden. That's the funny thing about it. So if you annoy me, I why am I still in your property? Yeah? That's what's funny about the situation. His parents are annoying him, but his parents are still looking after him, providing him with food, and living in his parents' back garden. So he hasn't gone that far with his parents, has he? That's what's funny about the situation. So he hasn't, he hasn't run away from home and gone somewhere else. He's run away from his house and gone into the back garden. Who owns the back garden? His parents, the same parents that annoy him. Yeah? 
What is funny about normal situation? So, so normal, so we can say, let's, let's write down his name. So Norman has left the house because because his parents have annoyed him. Norman has left the house because his parents have annoyed him. Where is he living? He's still living in his in his parents' back garden. He's still living in his In his parents garden I he is still depending on them so he's left them but he hasn't left them if you want to show your parents that you don't need them for making you sick, then you leave and live on your own. Literally. He's a kid, can't live on his own. Okay, tell us funny about the situation. So he's leaving his parents but not leaving his parents. So he's trying to make a point, making a fool of himself in the process. Okay, some of the language in the letters is also intended to be humorous. Explain what, uh, what is unusual about mom calling bees sweet and jolly on page 4. What is she being? On page 4, everybody turn to page 4. When the mother talked about him taking the TV up the, up the stairs, she mentioned something about the bees. Did you see those sweet, busy bees below your tree house? What is she indicating to him? What is she trying to four point his attention? Have you ever seen bees which are sweet? What do bees do to you? Sting you. They sting you. Okay. So question number 15 B. So she is being what do parents are? What are parents excellent at and teachers? Sarcasm. So she's taking the biscuit. What she's actually saying is the opposite. So the bees are not sweet, they are gonna come and sting you. So she's kind of like trying to scare him. She's being sarcastic trying to scare him. Oh, don't worry about the bees. They're nice and sweet. When we know that they're not nice and sweet. Okay. So let's go back to the answer. Explain what is unused about mom calling bees sweet and jolly. Okay. So we can say what? So mom is being sarcastic. It means the opposite. So mom is being sarcastic, something that parents are very good at and teachers. She means the opposite, so she really means that the bees are not sweet. And so no one should be afraid of the bees and come running back into the house.
Okay, question number 16. I think after this question, we start the next section about the earth house. Question number 16. Why do you think Norman finally came down from the tree? Explain fully using the text in your answer. Okay. But his sister was missing him, number one. Do you reckon he was missing his sister as well? Yeah. Yeah, because they're missing all the fighters that have all the running around the house and teasing each other. You can't tease yourself in the tree house, can you? Number one is missing them. He's missing his sister. Now his sister was bored. What do you think he was? He was bored out of his brains. Completely bored being up there by himself. Okay. Now, what do you get at home? You get nice, hot, warm, delicious food made by your mother. Was he getting nice, hot, delicious food up in the tree house? Cold sandwiches. So he's missing the normal parts of life and the nice, the comforts of home. Okay. What else was he missing by being up in the tree house? He was missing what? His, his pocket money. There's lots of things that were changed that were different by him being in the tree house. So, we have to mention all those points that we just mentioned into this next part of the text. So, why did the normal finally came down from the tree? So, initially it was, everything initially is what? It's exciting. When you start something new, you all want to go in that tree house. He was excited. After a while, what happened? The boredom kicked in. It was cold. There wasn't no proper warm food. He was missing his sister. So after a while, when the what, what do you call it? The novelty wore off. So, why did Norma finally came down? Okay, let's get this in the right position first of all. Okay. So initially, Initially, Norman was excited. But the novelty Okay, but the novelty soon wore off. So he got fed up of after a while. So what was he missing? So he was bored. Cold at night, yeah? Cold. Cold at night. Why else do you not have a tree house? What happened when you wanted to go to do... TV, playground, go, go to the toilet? Where do you do the Toilet, bathroom? There's no water in the tree house. Okay. So he's missing everything. So he was bored, cold at night. Okay. He was bored. Why was he bored? We said <coughs> there's no TV. Why is there no TV? There's no electricity in the tree house. Yeah, no TV. Yeah. Can't play with Game Boy. Can't play with this Game Boy. Runs out of batteries. Cold at night. Missing lovely hot dinners made by his mother. Okay. What happened to his bedroom? He's taken over by his sister. So he wanted to go back into his, his bedroom. grab his bedroom. He wanted his bedroom back. Okay, who did he miss? Have you mentioned that earlier? 
No? Uh, missing. Yeah. What did he miss with his sister? What did he miss, guy? Fighting with her. Fighting with her. Yeah? Kids like fighting with each other. When they go away from each other, they miss the fighting and the uh, running around and chasing each other. He missed. Fighting and playing with the sister. Okay, yes, and he, he wanted his pocket money back. Okay, I think that's enough there for us to get our full three marks. We explained how he felt, what he was missing, why he wanted to go back. Yeah, the the novelty had worn off. Okay, let's move on to the next page, please. If uh, any further ado, on page number nine. forward to page <coughs> actually it's not even a, a page in the original booklet because the original booklet has two parts so we've just done this part here there's another sheet which is attached to the back the earth ship can everybody turn to this first page please the earth ship and then there's the second page in the back Everybody needs to be looking at this page. Those of you who haven't looked at it before, can you look at it now, please? The Earth Ship. Good. You put mine to one side. <coughs> okay. Right, has everybody read this part of the booklet? If you haven't, you should come on time. Then you might get a chance to read it. Arriving 20 minutes late for the lesson is not acceptable. Okay. How many tires have to be thrown away every year? I want them to put their hand up and tell me which paragraph, what part of the page are we talking about? Okay. Mr. Idris. So how many tires? 48. Okay, what line are you on? Third line on the first paragraph. Okay. So third line on the first paragraph. It says every year there are 48 million tire, used tires in Britain that have to be thrown away. Excellent. Well, the one spot is there, Idris. So how many tires have to be thrown away? So the answer here is... 48 million. 48 million. If you want to write the number in full as a number, you can write that as well. It's no problem. Okay, which of these materials are used to build earth ships? Tick three. Okay, when you give me a material, I want you to tell me which way you found it. And I want everybody to look for them. Look for the materials used to build an earth ship. So the first one should be quite easy. The first one that we, is going to be the question tires. is tyres. Well done. Thank you Zara. Tyres is told by in the question 17. Old bottles and water. Okay, right. Old bottles and other waste materials. Okay, other waste material. Okay, we're looking at the selection that we have here in front of you, number 18. Okay, concrete is traditional building material and so is cement and so is bricks. But old wood, now can you tell me where you found those texts, please? Can you find me? Tell me. In the sec second paragraph, the first line. Okay, so Zara, I look at the second paragraph. She, she said old bottles, one, and reclaimed wood, which is another word for old wood. Okay. So they don't have here reclaimed wood, but old wood means the same. Re reusing the wood that's already been used once. So well done, well spotted Zara. So she's fine with the two other ones from the text. 
It's all about the text, folks. They're not asking you to guess the answer. You need to look at the text and find the answer. Okay, thank you, Zara. Right, fill in the table to show how the Earthship provides the following. One has been done for you. Okay, light. And so we need to have the Earthship provided. So protection from cold at night. The walls release heat into the rooms. So that's one. Right. Whoever gives me an answer, I want you to tell me where you got the, where the part of the text is. Come on folks, the rest of you, stop daydreaming and start finding the answers. Light and electricity.